with some uh, in the full guard. We're here and going over some basic de submission defense. So past couple weeks, obviously, been a little bit scattered with me being gone. Just the chaos that happens with that. Um, so we've covered some attacks, we've covered some sweeps, we've attacked some other things. But we're going to go over some basic white belt 101 armbar triangle omoplata defense. And some good practices in how to attack in these different situations. So one thing we have to remember is white belt rule number one is both hands are in the guard, both hands are out of the guard. Realize nothing good happens when you're one hand in, one hand out. So let's assume that I've done messed up. I'm down to jujitsu sometimes. Yep. Mendoza starts to try to hit this armbar here. One of the first things you have to recognize is the fact that he's going for an armbar. So the second your arm crosses that center line, he starts to do stuff. We're here. I have to start being aware of this. But let's just say, you know, we've screwed up and Mendoza swings, gets the armbar quickly before I can even realize what's going on. We're here, right? One of the biggest things you have to do here is get all your weight over this arm. As soon as that happens, the arm that is in the arm bar is going to grab my bicep. The arm that is not in the arm bar is going to scoop the back of his head, curling him in as much as I can. So we're here, curling that in. Our outside foot is going to kickstand him up and stop him from rolling under. And I'm putting all my weight goes over his knees here. So we're here, grabbing our bicep, grabbing the head, curling him up. Once we're here, slow, steady pulls to get our elbow out. Once our elbow's out, our hand comes to top. It pushes the knee. We step around and escape our other hand. So we're here. Mendoza goes for this armbar. I don't appreciate that. This hand grabs the bicep. You can grab the cloth or just cup the bicep, the tricep area. And I scoop the head and stack all my weight over the top of it. This leg kick stands up, because as you've seen, if not, guys can spin out and take the arm bar anyway. So I'm here. Little motions. One of the big things I'm going to watch you all do and then start yelling about is a lot of you guys are going to be like... When I'm... Ripping my arm out, my head and chest stay heavy on him. My arm is pulling out. It's little motions with the elbow, not with my chest. Because the second I relieve pressure off this, Mendoza is going to start that arm bar. Does that make sense? So when I'm here, he's in the arm bar. I stack him up. This arm is doing all the motion. I'm pulling this hand out. In the second it's out, it caps the knee. I shift this knee down and around, so that way I'm kind of side control, or at least past his legs for the most part. I then escape this hand, attack as needed. Questions on this? Biggest details on this, guys. One, being aware of the fact you're about to be armbarred. The earlier you can start to recognize the isolations, the things of that nature, the better off you're going to be. Two, making sure that you defend this arm as much as possible by getting it bent and getting it reinforced. A lot of people try to just stack. The reason I'm grabbing my bicep and curling that head is because it reinforces everything. It's really hard to extend my arm through my form. Yeah, when, and when I'm curling that head, if I talk to our strength expert, Mr. JJ, JJ, whenever we're lifting really heavy things, should I ever bend my neck and look at the mat? Should I ever bend my spine and curl it and do all sorts of weird things like that? No, that's why I'm stacking you. That's why I'm curling that head. Think about it in a reverse engineering way. What is Mahu trying to do to my arm? He's trying to isolate it, extend it, extend his hips. Straighten my arm with my thumb up. Reverse engineer what you should do then. You should reinforce your arm by getting it a partner, curl his neck, curl his hips, stack the weight on top of him, and get your arm out of the trouble as well. So if you're ever trying to figure out, oh, how do I get out of a certain position, the easy thought process is to think, what is he trying to do? And start with the opposite of that. It's not always the right answer, but it's always good to start with. 
questions on the arm bar defense. Grab the bicep, stack and scoop the head, little motions, get the elbow out, and to the top of the knee, push and pass. Ready? One. When I'm here with James, he goes up for this arm bar. When I'm here, guys, and I go to stack up, I'm not coming up to like a tripod position. My knee on this side is right in his hip bone. My knee comes right behind his back. I'm keeping everything tight, my weight over his knees. Biggest reason for this is the second I stand up here, if James doesn't suck, he's gonna start to spin and do unnecessary things that I don't appreciate. I don't need him to. So that's why when I'm there, I'm keeping that weight on top of him and on top of his knees. Make sense? So we're here. Let's assume good things have happened in my life. I start to, you know, I've defended the arm bar, but James doesn't suck at jujitsu. So the second I stack, I get up here, I get this arm out. He transitions back and goes to try and oh, I don't appreciate this. This is not very good. So, order of operations. First thing I'm going to do, walk my knees in and square my hips with his. So that we're dead on. Because the more angle I give James, the worse my life's going to be. We're going to go over two different options as far as... It's not in quite yet, and you've done a fucked up AA run option. So, right now, it's not in yet, right? Good, you know, life's still somewhat easy. I can still operate in a way that's meaningful. So all we're gonna do, both my hands are gonna come to the top of the knee that is around my neck. I'm going to posture up, raise up, and the second I feel his feet unlock here. So I'm coming up, feet unlock, I throw his legs back. Get him past So we're here. I've started out in this triangle, and I don't like what's happening. But it's not in so deep yet that you have to do other things. So I walk my hips in, get my head up. Now, when I say get your head up, I'm not meaning look over your shoulder and like way up. But the easiest way I can explain it is if I'm pointed this way, I'm looking right where the wall meets the ceiling. It's about the right height for your head. My eye line goes straight to that, because that gives me the posture I need to not be pulling down into the choke. Because once again, reverse engineer this. He's trying to pull my arm across, cut an angle, and pull me in. So to stop that, I kill the angle, get my arm away from him, and posture up. Reverse engineering is pretty useful here. The second you get this pass, pass the leg, side control, back attack, whatever you want from that position. Questions on this? When he's cut his angle. When he's got your arm across and he's cut that angle. So if I'm here and he's kind of got the half ass, I'm locking and I'm trying to cut here. Right about here is when you probably fucked up too much for this one. So right here, if I can stop him from here, probably in good enough position. But we'll work next what happens when the triangle's all but locked. You know, when you're all but out. That'll be our next here, posture up, other questions on this, is if they're loose when you pull their leg straight, is there any more there, yes, adjacent, <laughs> you know, it's one of those, James doesn't suck at jujitsu, so when I'm here, when I posture up, is there probably some tension and stuff I can put here? I'm kind of like stepping through the guard. Yeah, you can yeah. you can hit like the drop back, straight knee, and things like that. Would it be my first recommendation? No. Tool in the tool belt. Hey, you know. I think he's asking, can you step around? Yeah, that's what I'm Oh, coming around that way? No, I would not. At that point, just take side control. Unless you're short on him. 10 seconds left? Yeah, roll for what you can get your hands on. Any more time than that left, take side control. No. Can you try something sneaky from there late in the match? Probably wouldn't be my first choice. Other questions here? Fill her out. One. Good things, 
things are happening in life, and then I've done fucked up. So I'm here, packet goes for the arm, the triangle, and he starts to cinch this bad boy up, and I don't like what's happening. First thing I have to do is get this arm away from my neck. Easiest way to do that, cut it back across and scoop the hip. Because even if James locks his triangle right here, this isn't gonna feel great, but I at least can give myself some space here. So once we get here, I'm gonna scoop James up, stack in a little bit, and put my knees underneath his butt. Once we're here, I'm going to grab one hand to the knee, one hand here. Once again, posture up, get out. Here's the difference. The second your head comes out this way, you have to get this leg off. Because if not, all you've done is almost body. It's very convenient of you to do that. Gentlemen. So when I get to here, I have to cup this arm here, and I have to get in. Once I start defending, posturing up, getting that head out. Second it's out, you're passing to that top leg side. Questions on this? All the same concept, you're just scooping that hand underneath. Oh yeah, I'll do it a couple more. Other questions on this as far as from a technical side? Posturing up as much as I can and moving it in any way I can. Whether that's coming straight up or getting it off my head. Other questions? The biggest thing I gotta do is get my hips to that, that side. So if I'm here with James, I can't start coming this way. So for me, I'm gonna come here and start posturing up and coming to this side. Start opening this shoulder up, opening this elbow here. Even if I don't like tucking my hand all the way underneath, just putting it on the hip to give yourself some space here can do a lot for you. So once I start cutting this way, if James, or if James tried to almost me on this side, he's got a lot of motion and a lot of things in his way to get. So once I get here, then I can start posturing. Boom, broke, get over here. That's going to be the biggest thing to help stop that omoplata. It's coming this way, away from the arm that he's already isolated. Because think about it this way. This arm's already in trouble, guys. So once it gets here, I have to get his attack away from him. So I start to get my hips over this way, and I've stacked him up on this feet. How one comfortable is that? Not mm -hmm. for now, all in but it also makes him lose a lot of his leverage and a lot of his power. James trying to do a lot of strong stuff here. I've detached him from the mat, which helps me lessen his power. Once I get here, pass. Combat jiu bitch slap. <laughs> but biggest thing on this one, protect that arm, cut off to that side, work that punch. Once again, guys, the easy math of what is he trying to do to me? He's trying to isolate my arm across the body, cut an angle, pull my head down, bring his hips up. What do I do? I get my arm away from the far side, get it on the, the correct side, cut the angle the opposite direction of where he's trying to go, posture my head up, get my head out. Reverse engineering is one of the easiest ways to get out of space. Make sense? Questions? Punch him in the face as early on. How do I set up the lamp? I guess like we're actually picking them up without the if, if any of you ever try to rampage slam your way out of the triangle, I'll fucking shoot you. <laughs> if you're like, oh no, Dustin wouldn't do that. Or oh no, Dustin doesn't carry what he's in the corner. You're wrong on both fronts. <laughs> but it feels so cool. It feels cool, but it's the worst way. Basically, unless you are just he man strong for your weight class, and they are fucking terrible at jujitsu, there's no reason they don't sleep. Like, there's not a good reason to slay it. Would I defend a little bit, and then would my outside hand hit him in the face? Absolutely. Like, if I'm here with James, let's say we're playing combat jujitsu because we're gentlemen, you know, would I get here and start like that. 
Not that, but slamming out is never. Slamming out at 99.99% of the time is not the right answer. Never, never say it's 100% the wrong answer, but me, I'm in an open weight tournament where the play is the right answer. That's about the only time I can play. Make sense? I'm here. Good things happened in life. I defended the arm bar. I defended the triangle, but I done made a mistake. I went to here, but James is a little faster. He goes to over Ah, oh, I don't like what's happening. So, a couple things I'm going to do. This hand is going to go from the hip to the inside of this knee here. It's going to grab that knee. So, solid grip on the fatty part of your thumb. I'm going to post my outside hand in the mat. Sit into my hips, looking up. Once we're here, you have two options. You can start pulling him over, going this way. I never have liked that option. I just always feel like it's a lot of muscle and a lot of hope there that you're hoping works out. So when I'm here, I like to post this outside foot. And it's almost like we did a drill this one time where you baseball slide through. No, I'm around. Escape your hand. Oddly enough, I think that's a drill. So we're here. James is attacking my arm. I don't like that. I gotta get this hand into my knee, get that knee down, get my head up. The second that happens, I post my outside foot. I'm gonna pull him past my hip, slide past him here. The second I slide past, I start escaping this hand out. Make sense? Like rolling out of it. Great option. Gonna need you in just as much trouble. So what he's talking about here is yeah. So when I'm here, I go to roll out. Unless you're just scrambling, you're gonna land somewhere near an arm bar or somewhere near side control and max. I like that. That's less than enjoyable. So that's why I, I prefer this escape. Now, if you're in too deep, problems arise. Is a forward roll always there? Yes. Would it be option A for my options bar? No. That's the difference. Now, who belts and up? I'm also going to give you an option here. So I'm here. James is here. He figure fours his leg. Like a lot of guys do, and they're starting to really hammer down here. All we're going to do is I'm going to post up. I'm going to grab this foot. Now, the grip on this is the most important part. I'm going to go my pinky to the cap of his pinky toe. Grabbing here. So my pinky hits the top of his pinky toe, and I grip. I'm then going to slide and snap this behind my ear. Here. Now, I'm not going to baseball slide all the way through. All I'm going to do is grab the top of James's foot, try to put it under my armpit. Outside toe hole. Just body. <laughs> so I'm here, I'm turning in, rolling down. It's nice and violent because sometimes in life you need new innings. If it's not work, like if you do it here, what normally happens is guys straighten their legs and freak out. So it's not allowed you to come past anyway. But you can sometimes get a sneaky little tap right there and snap that foot up. Now, careful about it depends on your rule set if you're even allowed to hit because it is still considered an outside toe hold that's why i'm saying blue belts and up add that to the repertoire but even blue belts be careful about the tournaments gi you're normally not allowed to do it but no gi depending on what bracket you're in this can be an option so we're here i don't like what's happening here oh no i grab my thigh post up and i'm here if you're hitting the blue belt option, snap this behind your head, turn that in. If you're not, you can still snap this out of your way. Baseball slide past as you come up and around. Escape that hand. Remember, for tournament settings, always escape that hand because you will not score points until you do. It's a dumb rule, but unfortunately, we have to play by dumb rules sometimes. Questions on this? Anything else? All right, I'm here with James. James is good at jujitsu, so he's like, hey, Oba Plata. I'm like, hey, man, I don't appreciate that. 
this hand, comes inside my knee. Here, grabs D, grabs thigh, grabs whatever you get a hold of. I post here, get my head up. Baseball slide past his hips, come up and around, skate my hand, take side control, top knee on belly, King Kong. <laughs> for you who are uncivilized and like play punch face. How important is it for you to grab your There. <laughs> because I will wrist lock you there. <laughs> so, think about from a couple different options whenever I've taught mobile plunge. So I'm here with Mr. Hackett, he's here. Think about it from this way. If you stop me right here, but let's say you're just kind of hanging out, and you're here, you're just kind of hanging. I don't care about your feelings. I'll break your wrist off. So if I'm here and you're being lazy about it, I'm just going to cap your elbow and do the, you know, hello. You know. Well, that, you have options here to come. You know, there, there's a lot of things still available from there that you can hit. So when I'm there, that's why I'm grabbing that thigh. Once again, he's trying to isolate this arm. Reverse engineer that. I want to reinforce it with something. My leg's a good option there. That then gives me the time to get my posture up, get that leg post, and then being able to sit on what you need to do. That's why it's important, because if not, if you slow down my omoplata, I am not committed to omoplatas as a submission. <coughs> They're a sweep that happens to submit occasionally. In my opinion, that is what oval platas are. If you disagree, congrats, you're wrong. Um, there are very few people who I think hit oval platas at a high level. In jiu-jitsu, MMA, I just don't think it's the most effective mo motion for submissions. I think it's great for sweeps, motion, getting a lot of other things available to you. But as far as a technical, you know, hit this as a sub, it's not my favorite. So if I'm here, so let's say Mr. Hackett has fucked my life completely up, and I have let him get to here, and he's clapping me out here. You've done fucked up pretty hard, so you're going to run out of options pretty quickly. The biggest thing you're going to be trying to do is get a face back underneath you, trying to get here. You're trying to get back to this position. At worst case, you're trying to get up enough to forward. Because if, you, if you've gotten flattened out in an OMO and you're here, your, your time is very limited. You're trying to roll and do about anything to get your That's, If you've got to the point of flattened out, I'm not saying there aren't exit points. The exit points aren't technical there. Get, get movement, get some base, get something under. Other questions on OMO Plata? And I don't like it as a submission. Are you bailing on it as soon as you get the next hurdle? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but basically, one of two things is going to happen in my normal plot. I'm going to mod it into something else. So here recently we worked on, if I'm here, being able to come underneath, shoulder crunch out. Like, I'm going to go to something like this, to a reverse arm lock, to, you know, wrist lock you. For me, I... March will be year 14 in Jiu-Jitsu. If I've hit an Omoplata as an actual submission more than a dozen times, like it's just not a, a high percentage move. It may just be me, and I may suck at Omoplatas, therefore my grudge against them is that, but I just don't see a lot of people hitting them at a high level. So I'm gonna hit something else off of it, or go back into something else out of it. So I'm gonna hit that shoulder crush, I'm gonna hit a wrist lock, I'm gonna hit you know, a lot of a lot of times when I'm here, and you guys are here, I'll crunch here and just hit the modding more. Like I'm not even hitting it as an oval, I'm hitting it with the more track. Like I'm gonna hit something more in that speed that I am truly finishing that board using it. Once I get you flattened out, I may try to sit up and take it, but if it doesn't work, I'm escaping that way. And I just flat face down, I'll take that. So it just depends on what we're doing. Obviously, MMA, the second I get you broke down, I'm hitting you as often, early and often. But for civilized people who choke with collars on, you can use it to go somewhere else pretty quick. Other questions?